Oh, crap. Hey guys, RV Pastor Kevin here. Guess what? I have a boat. And yes, bust out another thousand. Hole in the water you pour money in. I get it. But I also know that it's a great time for me just to get alone, go fishing, clear my head after all of the stuff that goes on during the week. So, my boat. It's a, uh, it's an oldie but a goodie. I've got my 1986 Johnson 28 horsepower outboard engine and it's given me some issues uh, initially it wouldn't <laughs> it wouldn't go uh, it ended up that uh, the prop on it was the wrong pitch change the prop now it cooks this little boat is a 16 foot Sundance skiff it'll do about 20 miles an hour over the water which is just fine for me um, but now it's going to have this issue where it feels like it's dropping a cylinder. Um, and uh, so I've been looking, trying to, you know, I've cleaned the carburetor a hundred times. The carburetor is just beautiful. Uh, brand new fuel lines, brand new fuel pump. Uh, I don't think it's a fuel issue. I think it's an electrical issue and I want to show you what I think. So she's got a brand new fuel pump. Brand new fuel lines, brand new coils, but we have a little bit of an issue here with this connection right here. If we open up this connection, you can see all the ooey gooey goodness that is corrosion in there and here. And I have tried a number of things. I've tried uh, electrical contact cleaner. I've tried a number of things, but today we're going to try some good old household cleaning items to try and clean this up and get it to be a really good connection. Then we'll put some dielectric grease on it and hopefully that will fix the problems. Maybe, who knows? Let's get after it. Before you get going, you want to disc, you want to make sure that you unhook the battery. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is using uh, some good old baking soda, some water, put it in a tub, jiggling around the contacts in down into that and then using a toothbrush and don't forget your safety glasses and kind of washing uh, you know kind of scrubbing them then we'll rinse them again see if we can't get some of that corrosion out of there and then we will finish up with some dielectric grease to make sure that this doesn't happen again i've got the contact cleaner here just in case we want to try that again here So now like the shampoo bottle, rinse and repeat. Rinse that off a little bit. it sit for a little bit all right so we're all done but as you can see it's not exactly all gone so let's look and see down in here we can see still some corrosion down in there we want this clean we can also see man that pen right there is just green still so what we need to do now is to uh, maybe file this a little bit with some uh, not with sandpaper 
because we don't want to remove anything off that, but we do want to clean this up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a very small drill bit and I'm going to put it in the chuck of the drill. And now I'm gonna take some steel wool and I'm gonna kind of wind it around this. To make just a little bit of an abrasive Okay, so this looks a whole lot better now. I don't see very much of the green. I do see a little bit of yellow, so we'll keep, uh, we'll go back to the baking soda solution here. All right, so in there, I don't see any more bubbles coming up out of that at all. You can kind of see down in there. I don't see any bubbles coming out, which would be, which would indicate the presence of any kind of corrosion. So there is that. I'm gonna clean this out now. One side is pretty clean now. So now what we're gonna do is just put a little dab of dielectric grease on each of the holes. I'll make a little covering, a little waterproof covering for the contacts that are in there. All right. All right, so when you started, you should have unhooked the battery. So now this other side that still has some pretty good green stuff down in there, we're gonna have to clean this pretty good. So we'll go back to the baking soda solution and I can still see that stuff just bubbling. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this emery cloth and we're going to go around in here and make sure that all of these are shined up and have good, good metal on them. I'm going to use a little bit of WD-40. What I'm doing with this is kind of wrapping that around the pin and then using the needle nose pliers to kind of uh, go around it and scuff up the sides. Not bad, but just, just enough to remove all of that corrosion. Look at all that. Ugh. Again, this is just emery cloth. It's not sandpaper or, uh, or anything overly abrasive. Um, I'm just trying to remove the corrosion off of each of these pins so we get good metal to metal contact when this connector is put together. All right, so that's that. Let's do another round of this. Since we've got some metal, so we've got some metal in there. Let's see if we can check this out. Hardly any bubbling right now. So that means that the corrosion has been taken care of. So now we'll pour that out and we'll see if we can. Rinse that off a little bit. Okay, so now let's dry this one off. Slide back, we gotta match your arrows up. Let's see if any of the dielectric grease is still on there. Let's put some. Again, this is not a bigger the blob, better the job kind of thing. This is just a uh, just a light coat. All right. 
All right, so that does it. Just in time, the uh, clouds are looking a bit ominous. So we've got this connector cleaned. It may not fix the problem of the engine acting like it's dropping a cylinder, but at least I know that that connection there is clean. So with that, I hope this has helped you as you're working on your engine. Look for those things that are, are maybe corroded and see if you can fix those. Um, make sure you make it to church on Sunday.